61A, lecture number 34. Announcements. The scheme project is due tomorrow, but you get an early submission bonus point for completing the project today. Today we'll have a project party, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Here's a link to the Piazza post about all the details. Homework 9 is due on Friday. It's about SQL. It's a half-length homework. Shouldn't take you too long, but it is important to do a few practice questions to make sure you understand how SQL works. We'll have a practice final this Friday instead of a lecture, and it will be run during the regular class period to 10 p.m. to 3 p.m. You'll get three bonus points if you participate. We'd like everybody to participate just to make sure that nobody's going to have technical issues during the main exam and to give you a chance to look at the format of the exam. If you're on another continent and this time is not convenient for you because it's in the middle of the night, then you can take it a little bit late and you'll still get the three bonus points. But if you're here in the U.S., please take it on time. I've received several questions about the format of the exam. It will be a mixture of multiple choice and fill in the blank. You won't have to draw anything. You will have access to cs61a.org and a Python interpreter if you want to use them. But the exam is not designed for you to have to use the interpreter. You should really be able to answer these questions just by reading them, thinking a little bit, and writing down the answer. There will be questions about what Python does, but there will be a little bit different format than the typical what would Python display questions, because if you have an interpreter, those are pretty trivial. So instead, questions will have the format, what does this function do, where we show you a function and ask you what it does. Does f of x square x, double x, return none, or never return? This does not have a return statement, but it also doesn't run forever. Instead, it returns none. This is something you're supposed to know, and you should need an interpreter in order to figure this out. You can see this demo by logging into final.cs61a.org, which is linked here from the announcements. There it is. So here's a demo question about scheme. I'll let you take a look. And what about environment diagrams? Well, if we gave you some code and asked draw the environment diagram, you could just put it into Python Tutor and it would tell you the answer. So instead you have to do it in reverse. We'll give you some code with a couple of blanks and the environment diagram that results and you try to figure out what goes in the blanks. So you might notice there are two calls to G, but in the code, there's only one call to G. So perhaps you need another call to G. And then you have to figure out what to call it on. And I think a lot of the same skills you're used to applying to solve environment diagrams apply here. You'd first run a trace through and see what happens with the code provided. X would be bound to a list containing a list containing two. So it must be G that adds these two elements. And you can see in this code that Y is never changed. So it must be that what goes in blank B is an expression that creates this value, a list containing a list containing two. But it's not just any list containing two. It's the same list that can be referred to as X zero. So now we look at our options. Is Y just X? No, then that arrow would be pointing there. Is it X zero? No, then that arrow would be pointed there. Is it a list containing X? No, then this arrow would be pointed there. And is it the result of calling list on X? Well, at the beginning of the diagram, X was bound to just a list containing this list. And so if we call list on that, we get a new list containing that list. So that's the right answer. I think the best way to solve this problem is to start drawing the environment diagram until you reach a blank and then think about what goes in that blank. And then there will also be fill in the blank coding questions. Here in the demo, I show you an actual fall 2019 final exam question. And the only difference in the format is that we've labeled the different blanks and you answer below what goes in each blank. So the best way to prepare for these kinds of questions, aside from taking the practice exam, is just to look over a few past final exams or midterm exams. I think the problem solving skills you apply there will be extremely similar to the ones you need in order to solve this kind of exam. The final exam itself will be next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
We have some topical review sessions this week, which will be recorded and posted to YouTube. And finally, the completely optional Scheme Recursive Art Contest entries are due two weeks from today. This is completely optional. It doesn't provide any bonus points or anything like that, but it is a fun way to apply what you've learned in this course about recursion in order to make some cool art and have your classmates take a look. There will be winners by popular vote, your vote, and we'll also make a gallery of everybody's entries. Well, at least all those entries that follow the rules. This semester we have two new rules that I think will encourage people to be creative and make sure that this is a truly highbrow and sophisticated art gallery. So no political content this semester and no lewd entries. Let's keep it clean. Thanks.